Peter Painter and the No Home Animals. Peter Painter was wandering about in a wide alley. It was the first time he had ever been in an alley. He was hoping he was going to meet with an adventure. The very next minute, he was certain he was going to meet with an adventure. He saw four animals in the alley, a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a guinea pig. They were walking parade fashion, one just behind the other. First the dog, then the cat, next the rabbit, and the last, the guinea pig. The dog had a piece of blanket folded over his back. The ends were sewed together with strong white thread directly under his middle. The cat had a pink celluloid thimble stuck on the tip of one ear. She had yards of blue thread wound round her neck. The rabbit had a small fan folded under one arm. The guinea pig wore a pair of spectacles balanced across his flat nose. Hey there, dog, hailed Peter Painter. Hi there, cat. Wait a minute, rabbit. Hello, guinea pig. The animals stopped their parade. They turned and looked at Peter Painter. The dog wagged his tail. The cat waved her tail. The rabbit bobbed his short tail. The guinea pig, because he had practically no tail at all, only stared through his spectacles. How do you do, said Peter Painter politely. This is a pleasant surprise. Whose pets are you? We are nobody's pets. We're the no home animals, they answered in chorus, which sounded very fine indeed following their parade. Ah, these animals have no home, thought Peter Painter. Right here is something for me to do. Aloud, he said, tell me about it. We used to be pets of children, began the dog. We wandered away from our homes. I can make my way in the world, boasted the rabbit, but it certainly keeps me on the hop all the time. Bragging, Bunny squeaked the guinea pig. He wrinkled his small nose and his spectacles jiggled. Stop quarreling, commanded the dog. Peter Painter, this rabbit and this guinea pig do nothing but quarrel, complained the cat. They quarrel all day from morning till night. They even quarrel during the night, sighed the dog. Well, I have reason to quarrel during the night, said the rabbit. This guinea pig sleeps too close to me. He snuggles his head under my chin and he presses himself into my side. I get cold, squeaked the guinea pig. I'm cold natured. He shivered, shivered and huddled in himself into himself. And I get hot, snapped the rabbit. I'm hot natured. Always I must carry this fan. He unfurled his fan and fanned himself. Why, Peter Painter, some nights the skinny pig snuggles so close to me and presses so near to me that I am forced to fan myself the whole night through. Dear, dear, sighed Peter Painter. This is an unhappy state of affairs. Since you all stay together, you are a family. A family should be peaceful and contented, loving one another. That's the only way to have a happy home. But we have no home, the animals cried in chorus. We're the no-home animals. Why don't you make yourself a home? Well, we hadn't thought of it, said the cat. We can't build a house, said the rabbit. We don't know how, said the dog. Can you please tell us how to make a home for ourselves, Peter Painter? Asked the guinea pig. He took off his spectacles and polished them on his little chest. Yes, I can tell you how to make a home for yourself, said Peter Painter. First, where do you want to live? Right in this alley, answered the animals. Why? Asked Peter Painter. Because this is the best place we've found to get food, explained the dog. Astonishingly good food is placed in this alley. You'd be surprised at how much meat is left on the bones I find here. And how often fish is put here, said the cat. And such nice carrots, said the rabbit. And lettuce that is often still crisp, squeaked the guinea pig. I think you're very lucky animals, said Peter Painter. No wonder you want to make your home here in this alley looked up and down the alley. What are all those empty boxes for? Nothing. Do they belong to anyone? No. Good. We shall use the largest one for your home. Can't we take two small ones and have a two-room home? inquired the rabbit. I'd enjoy a separate room from the guinea pig. He likes to sleep where it's close and stuffy. I like plenty of fresh air. 
No, decided Peter Painter. Two boxes placed close together, side by side, would attract notice. Then someone might break up your home. We'll take the very largest box. You, Rabbit, may sleep nearest the door. And when you get plenty of fresh air, the cat shall sleep with me on my blanket, announced the dog. With me in the middle for warmth, squeaked the guinea pig. No, growled the dog. No, spat the cat. Hey, stop quarreling, laughed Peter Painter, and let's get busy. Let's push this biggest box near the alley wall. Come on. Ready, everybody? Right, shoulders to the box. I'll take a deep breath. Now, all together, one, two, three, push. They pushed the box close to the alley wall, and they left a space just large enough for the animals to go in and out. That was the doorway. Is that our home? asked the dog in dismay. It's not very home-like, said the cat in disappointment. Peter Painter laughed. Give me time, give me time, and you shall see what you shall see. What shall we see? asked the rabbit. Well, that's to be a surprise, said Peter Painter. While I'm preparing the surprise, each of you must do something. What? cried all the animals together. Forage for furnishings, declared Peter Painter. Each of you must hunt up and down the alley in hidden spots and narrow corners in out of the way places. Each of you must find something for your new home. While you are hunting, I shall prepare my surprise. Right-o, cried all the animals together. They ran away. Each hurried to find something for their new home. Peter Painter slipped into the box. Immediately, he set to work. He worked with speed and precision. He worked with the paints in their pots on his paint pot tray, which swung from his shoulders by a stout leather shoestring. He worked with his paintbrushes. The ceiling he painted sky blue, the walls he painted shining yellow, and the floor he painted grass green. He backed out of the box and he put his paintbrushes away. All ready, he cried. From up and down the alley, the animals came hurrying. The dog, the cat, the rabbit, and the guinea pig. They crowded about the doorway to see their new home. They peered inside and they saw the sky blue ceiling. They saw the shining yellow walls. They saw the grass green floor. They cried aloud in dis delight and surprise. Ooh, ah, ooh, eek. I'm glad you like it, laughed Peter Painter. Now let me see what you've brought to furnish your new home. The dog had brought an old clock. Good, approved Peter Painter. No home is a home without a clock. The cat had brought a small box. Fine, approved Peter Painter. This box will make a center table. The rabbit had bought, brought a pan. It was dented a bit and battered a little, but there was not a hole in it anywhere. Hooray, approved Peter Painter. Every home must have a container for fresh water. Yes, yes, agreed the rabbit. When I get too hot in the night, a drink of fresh water may cool me off. He unfurled his fan and fanned himself. The guinea pig had brought an old rubber sh overshoe. It was a man's overshoe and quite large. The guinea pig had lined it with feathers. And what in the world is this for? Laughed Peter Painter. See the shoe with the feathers? For my bed, explained the guinea pig. The overshoe is rubber and rubber resists damp and cold. I've lined it with feathers. A feather bed is warm and snug. He nodded his head with such satisfaction that his spectacles nearly fell off his nose. It's a most fortunate find. The rabbit sniffed and twitched his whiskers. You think of no one but yourself. When you think of yourself, you think of nothing but warmth. He fanned himself vigorously. You should be glad the guinea pig has made himself a warm bed, Peter Painter told the rabbit. Now he won't sleep close to you. I should think you'd be pleased. Well, I am pleased, said the dog, and I'm sure the cat is pleased, aren't you, cat? It's really my, none of my business, said the cat. Why don't we get settled? Yes, why don't you, laughed Peter Painter. They moved the cat's box onto the house. It made an elegant center table. Upon the center table, they set the dog's clock. It did not run or keep any time, but it looked handsome. Under the center table, they set the rabbit's pan and filled it with fresh water. Then in the corner, farthest from drafts or fresh air, they placed the guinea pig's overshoe bed lined with feathers. 
After all, said the dog, a small bed like that does give the place a cozy look. The rabbit placed his fan against the wall about an inch from the door. I'll sleep right here where I'll be cool, he said. The cat took the pink celluloid thimble from the tip of her ear, placed it on the center table. She unwound the blue thread from around her neck. She rewound it into a small ball, and then she placed it beside the thimble. She smiled at the dog. Sewing materials on the table give the place a homey look, don't you think so? I do, said the dog but where shall I put the blanket for our bed? Any place that suits you, purred the cat. Please put it near my overshoe, begged the guinea pig. Then if I should get cold in the night, I could sh uh, shove my overshoe on the edge of your bed blanket. All right, said the dog agreeably. His strong white teeth ripped the st stitches the cat had sewed in the blanket. He spread the blanket on the floor near the overshoe filled with feathers. He sat down and looked about the place. It certainly is a handsome home. The cat sat down and began washing her face. It's an unusually handsome home. The rabbit hopped over to the door. He sat down on his hind legs and leaned against the wall. He tilted back his head. He unfurled his fan and he fanned himself. I'm sure there'll be a cool night breeze through this doorway. The guinea pig hopped into his overshoe and he snuggled down amongst the feathers. Ho hum, he yawned. I shall now have a warm and pleasant nap. Peter Painter looked at each of the animals. He looked around at their new home, fresh, clean, and gaily colored. He smiled. I like this, he murmured with satisfaction. I'm glad that you are no longer no home animals. I certainly thank you, said the dog. I too, said the cat. And I too, said the rabbit. The guinea pig said nothing at all. He was fast asleep in his overshoe bed. So that's Peter Painter and the No Home Animals. When I was little, we always liked to think that the animals and their lovely box found a lovely home with kids. Peter Painter. <laughs>